exhaust, open source, industrial servo motor. Mechadrino features a 14-bit magnetic encoder for precision position feedback. True closed loop control rejects disturbances. In addition to closed loop position control, Mechadrino features velocity, torque, and user definable modes. I love closed loop control systems. Um, and I can still remember the first time I, I built some kind of closed loop, you know, thing. It was a, it was like a DIY laser projector. And so I, I was using the hard disk voice coils and some little optical sensors to provide feedback. And the first time I had a piece of code, which was acting like a spring and I could kind of push on it and feel the force response and actually have this physical system, which was responding to this equation that I typed in to an IDE somewhere. You know, that was a really cool experience. And it, it just requires so many steps because it's not just, you know, blinking an LED. It's having inputs and outputs and a loop and it has to be fast enough. And it's really easy to break the hardware if your control loop isn't working properly when you t first test it. So it's this whole sequence of things, any one of which could cause you to kind of want to give up. And so it's really great to see a project come out and hit what I think might be a sweet spot between, you know, having having something that's easy to use, but also really powerful and isn't going to break the bank because I think they've taken a pretty novel approach to reuse uh, readily available components to make a really nice product. And sometimes I think people can easily dismiss simplicity, like, ah, it's just a microprint. It's like an Arduino with like a stubborn motor controller on it, and it can't even do other stuff. Sometimes you have to just execute simplicity well to make sure that it's usable for lots of different people. The Flyby itself um, is, is another, uh, it's, it's an automated science platform wrapped around microscopy, right? Maybe if I'm saying microscopy, right? Microscope. I don't want to say microscope, but anyway. Um, so it's it's all about automating the science, um, and so uh, it has like you know like a light source interface. It's got uh, motion control if you need to change your aspect, um, and it's got uh, a logging capability as well. Uh, so you can get um, you you can take like a, a series of readings and measurements over a period of time. So what I like about FlyPi is that they give you some tools for setup and you can choose which tools you want to build into your project and um, uh, you know they, it's sort of modular that you can add the parts that you're interested in and not the parts that you might not need or you know you build on what you have um, and the idea that you can do it all low cost um, wherever you are with the tools you have on hand. But also they've gone the extra mile to say, you know, the experimental setup part, and I don't know how else you'd describe that better, but essentially they've got specific experiments they can do with the setup. So uh, to do with the, you know, the wavelength and frequency of the light, they've got specific tests to look for specific parasites and do various other scientific testing. So I thought that was quite, in, you know, taking the uh, USB webcam microscope thing to the next level and actually saying it's applied to these things and situations, the developing world and so on. Dextra is an open source and low cost bioelectric and processes. One of the key features of Dextra is its size, which is the size of an average male hand. I really wanted to make it compact with all the actuators and electronics embedded inside the hand, so that any amputee with any level of amputation could use it. The key to the compact size of Dextra is its design based on finger modules. Each module comprises a micro GRF DC motor, position feedback provided by a magnetic encoder, and a mechanical printable finger. I was really impressed by, by this hand, um, particularly because of the ability for it to have a dexterity to pick up many different things. Um, the video is well documented video showing the ability of this to pick up squishy things and hard things, yet doing it on a well documented but really low cost system. Um, it's probably dating myself, but when I was taking, when I was learning grass maps and in robotics classes 15 years ago, you know, these systems were really complicated and really expensive um, to be able to pick something up you know, with the precision and the reliability that they're showing in this video. So the fact that someone could actually take these instructions and go and build this, um, it was pretty shocking to me. And in the video, you can see the creator uh, putting the whole thing together, you know, in time lapse, but still 26 minutes to put the whole hand together. 
And uh, I also like the fact that uh, there's uh, force feedback, or at least motion feedback control. So if you grip something, the hand knows that it's you know gripped down. And I think that's actually a new feature that I hadn't seen in uh, sort of DIY prosthetics before.